podcast of the night, of course, of R&B Vibes. And I am with someone that, I don't know, I can't use the word obsessed because um, obsessed has different meanings for you. <laughs> and we're going to get into that a little later. How are you doing, Byron? I'm good. How are you, Ebene? I'm great. And I'm great now. Let me let me get this started because I know people do this all the time with your last name. Let's hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. Byron. Jawan. First person to get it right on the first one. Let me tell you this right now. This is what we do. We win. We, we win, win here. We win 92 here. 92Q, home of winners. Home of winners. That's home what winner. we do. <laughs> now, how often do you actually have to correct somebody when it comes to that? Like, I'm going to say three out of five. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I get it. Maybe like Juan A, Juan Ye. Like, Joe Budden called me Juan Ye first. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't understand why. I love Joe, though. Shout out to Joe. So, yeah. like, you know, it's just, I, I don't know. I thought it was like a simple Last name. I mean, I get it. My name is Epine, and I always get Emily and Amami. Emily is crazy. Emily is what I got before. There's no M in your name. At all. (laughs) That's crazy. At all. And then I remember when I was in high school, because it's always, not high school, it's middle school. Oh, on the attendance sheet? Oh, my gosh. It was horrible. (laughs) I I would hate when they go through the list and say the names. They're like, oh, is Sierra here? Okay, Sierra. (laughs) Even even like with the substitute <laughs> teachers, there's always the subs, bro. Like, like they always mess everything up for everybody. They mess it up, and you Literally. be sitting there like, just don't say my name. Just, you might as well not even be there. Just bypass me, bypass me. That's it. That's <laughs> but, it. But now they they're saying the name. They're putting respect on your. They name. are putting respect on your name because you're a winner. Man, you know uh, what I'm saying? Come on now, come hey. on. So so let's go ahead and get into the start of it all. I'm not going to do the whole questions of where you started because I know church is always a good background for all of us. No, for sure. But she was actually a, a Christian artist. Is that right? I was. How did you know that? This. I, I feel like I'm on Narwhal. That's crazy. Anyways, so that's wild. <laughs> People don't realize my interviewing skills. Is that's different. that's tough. Nah, yeah, I was a um, Christian artist. Um, I was a Christian rapper actually. Okay. Um, with a, a label that was actually here in Nashville. Um, so I had my start and I went R&B in 2019. Really like 2021, but like I started that uh, journey in 2019. But yeah, that's where I was at. So tell me, what was your experience as a, a Christian artist? It, it was um, it was interesting because it's like I was super, super deep in my faith, which I'm still in my faith, but I just kind of like molded it to where I am now. Um, at that time, I was super young. I got signed when I was like 19. Yeah. And I told my mom I was going to get signed at 19, like when I was like 15. Yeah. Uh, she was just like, because she wanted to know what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I was like, oh, I want to be a rapper. Da, da, da. She's like, be realistic. And I don't know what it is with us <laughs> black people. When somebody said we can't do something, Ooh. are we going to go do it? Yeah. Like, so I was like determined. And literally, um, after I graduated, um, literally like a summer after that, I was in college. I was in mm. community college. And everybody was like, don't you do music? I was like, yeah. They was like, you're really good. And it's like, I was in an audio engineering class at Gaston College in Gastonia because that's like where I'm from I was born in Charlotte though and really country town nothing nothing is there or whatever and I was just like bro I just really need to just go for this so I dropped out and then a month later I got signed oh it was crazy oh did you ever regret dropping out though um no but sometimes like I'm like eh but then when I get on stage and stuff like that and people send me my words back to me like, I, oh that made that decision it's like okay, it's cool okay. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. you did great in gospel I mean you even did a collab with uh, I think with Derek Minor right yeah that's the homie that's like that's still that's still my brother like he's the one that pulled me out of the trenches of gas so yeah yeah it's funny I'm still with them but they've like made uh, an R&B label just for me so like because they, they believe in me that much so like you know <gasps> shout cool. out to R&G Doc Watson and Derek Minor like yeah. They really they really did their thing, so I'm really appreciative. So, no. Yeah, I didn't even have to, like, go find another label or anything like that. So, I'm like, they just... They just say, hey, here's home. Home's like, here. Hey. He was like, hey, well, we're going to grow with you, so whatever you want to do, we don't care. We're sure not. I love it. So, you know, shout out to my people. Now, I'm curious about the conversation you had with mom, because if I'm correct <laughs> from my from my massive, intense research... How did you find yeah. this information? <laughs> I am like the perfect. I should have been a private eye. Like you should have been a PI for but sure. But I'm, I'm just really good at just talking, and I love talking. Um, but your mom is a minister, or is she a pastor? Yeah, my mom is a minister and pastor. Like she do everything. But yeah, my mom um, and my whole family, we grew up in church. Like my yeah. my mom was always in the church. Like you know, you know them double services when they don't feed you. It Ooh, was like I hate that those. Type. We was that we was Ooh, that yeah, deep in there. That so was like. Us. It was crazy, but, like, my mom is a minister. She always just, like, raised me just to, like, always just follow what God has for you and everything yeah. like that. So when I told her, like, she already knew I was mad talented because it's, like, when I was, like, seven, I just started playing, like, multiple instruments and stuff. So mm-hmm. she was like, oh, okay. 
And then I wanted to get on the choir. They didn't let me get on the choir because I was too young, but then they let me get into it. And then when I got into middle school, that's when, like, which is so funny that we're mentioning this right now, Drake started, like, really popping in 20, like, 20, like 2009. So, like, when I, like, was in, like, eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, I started really, like, wanting to, like, make music. And that's when Drake was coming on the scene, and I got super inspired with it. I was terrible, but, like, <laughs> I just kept doing it. Like, even, like, I never won a talent show in my life, which was so crazy. This is fun. And then it's, like, <laughs> literally, I remember, like, um, me and my old friend, we did this uh, middle school talent show, and I, we did, like, uh, Nothing on You by B.O.B. and Bruno Mars. Yeah, yeah. And, like, we dressed the part, too, so it was hilarious. But, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's <laughs> But my cute. mom told me, like, that day when she saw me on stage, she knew, like, I had something. Like she yeah. specifically said that. So, like, after that, I just kind of kept at it. And she just kind of, like, believed in me. She, like, even when I was performing at, like, churches, like, she would pull up with me. She would just, like, do everything with me. So when I made the R&B transition, it was very interesting because she was, like, <laughs> she supported it, but she was just, like, what in the world? But, you know, now she sees, like, especially, like, when I went on tour with Keon Dixon in 2022, like, she just, like, saw, like, everything in culmination and then when i went to the grammys in 23 um she was just like okay like, yeah so yeah she's always been supportive so it's been cool but it was definitely an interesting conversation coming from one space to a whole new type thing yeah because my mom because i'm a preacher's kid myself my mom's a pastor pks pks in a row shout out to the female pastors you know out there because y'all are out there we love you and support you um but i know my mom because i work in r&b and mm. every time i'm with an artist or she'll see something she's like hmm. <laughs> So I'm curious to when she listens to your R and B lyrics in comparison to your Christian yeah. lyrics. So what does she? What's her intake? She just be like, "You gonna do what you gonna do." But <laughs> you know, but I think it's cool because it's just like the song that came out that just blew up for me was just an accident. Was obsessed. Like I didn't even, I didn't even yeah, mean to write yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a songwriter, so I was just like, because at that time I was. I mean, I'm still in this, but I got recently inducted into Timberland's uh, Beat Club as a writer. So I okay, was just like yeah, yeah. writing stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then when I made that song, it just was an accident. And then it just kind of like happened. And I was like, okay, whatever. I went to the studio. I didn't really think anything of it. And it just started going crazy viral. But it was weird. And I was just like, why is this type of thing the thing that just goes crazy? So like, it was funny. Like a few months ago, I was doing some content. And I like made my mom. I was like, I'm playing. I'm going to play these songs mm -hmm. by me to see which ones like, you know, so then I played just a few of them, and I played Obsessed, and I was like, you know this one? She was like, yes. So I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, but, at the, like, I'm just super honest with my mom. I don't want to lie to my mom. I've never lied about, to my mom about really anything that I do. I'm just like, if she asked me, like, do you be... I was like, yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm a grown It man. is what it is. It is what it is. But you know, we got to talk about that real quick. That, that okay. song, Obsessed. Um, that song, Obsessed. Let me tell you, um, I like the song. It's yeah. a great song. Yeah. I'm like a mama. Because mm. when I heard, I got to look at my little notes because I got to remember this. I remember this. Yeah. I want you obsessed. Mm -hmm. I'll take your soul and leave you spiritless. A fact. You got to explain. I'm going to eat explain. I'm going to eat her. So anyway, <laughs> so back to... Uh, <laughs> it's self-explanatory. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> well, what? Well, you know, when Mama heard that, she didn't think that. She just thought. I don't. I don't, I don't know. My mom. My mom. My mom is not dumb. I know my mom yeah, knew yeah. what I was talking about. So I'm just kind of like, you know what it is. But it's crazy. What is funny was women championed it into another thing, which yeah. is fire. Because it's like the women that love that song. They just really translate and they be like, I want my man, I want my partner obsessed with me. Obviously, it's sexual too, but like, yeah. they're just like, I want my partner to be so invested into me that I'm all they think about. Because this is the thing, I have a lot of women that are friends, and a lot of them just love saying that they just want their man and their partner just to be in their skin. Mm. Like, I want them to be in my skin. Like, I want them to be on my mind 24-7. You don't, they don't want them clingy. Yeah. And I've noticed this, and anybody that like really knows this, like, y'all know, like, when, there's a fine line. And it's only between for the women that actually likes you. It's don't this don't work if one woman don't like you. A woman wants you to be like obsessed with her and like always gassing her up and stuff like that, but she don't want you to be clean. Like you gotta figure out that balance. So that was just a theme song for them. And it like made them feel beautiful. It made them feel like, you know, just prized. And I love that. If I can make music that makes people feel like that, my job is completed. I love that. I mean, yeah, when I heard it, it yeah. But, <laughs> but it made me smile because you, you don't, a lot of relationships lack a big
bit of affection yeah uh, and in- intimacy outside of the physical traits of it all but intimacy in a mental a mental situation be connected be with me be present yeah with me and I, I wonder in your relationships when it comes to specifically you have you had a past this is just a, a, being a listener nah, tell me, it tell makes me, me tell think me, tell me. Was your exes ever present with you? I mean, in communication. Ooh, let's get in into intimacy. it. And it's funny, Daisha just takes me back too. So like, that's great. We can call her. Whenever yeah, yeah, we're to. gonna have to. We're gonna yeah. have to. But I, I, it, I noted that because I, I'm listening to everything, and I'm just like, I don't feel like his exes did this. Is that true? Yeah. So the thing is, and we're gonna just preface this by. Go to therapy, y'all, because therapy is great. It's a beautiful thing. Shout out to my uh, therapist, Kristen. Um, I need to come see you. Um, <laughs> but, nah, a lot of my exes, uh, so we just going to, I guess, go up like with the thing that really started a lot of this. Mm-hmm. So um, there was a girl that I really liked, um, which is, it was so weird. I met her, like, in 2020, so you already know a lot of online relationships was, like, whatever. So I met this girl off TikTok or whatever, and I... Really, really, really started to get to know her. She just got out of something fresh, so it wasn't even. I, I didn't even try to slide on her at first. Like I just thought, I just loved her content. She was just cool. And then like, I don't know. One day we just started DMing, and she told me she was freshly single. Yada yada yada. And it was funny. She lived in Chicago. Y'all know I'm from Charlotte, so I was living in Charlotte. And we actually met here. We actually met in Nashville. Oh wow! It actually was crazy. Daisha actually helped me set a lot of this up, which was crazy. I, I, Daisha McBride, what the that, hell? That's my, Not that's you. my, like, she didn't set up the relationship, <laughs> but I got to, I got to uh, Nashville to meet her for the first time, and this is how much of a lover boy I am, y'all. Yeah. I got my friend to, like, make a basket of all of her favorite things, like, an actual handmade basket, and I put all of her favorite things, her favorite snacks, oh, her favorite wines, all yeah. that other stuff. We got the uh, Airbnb, I got the Airbnb, I set it up with, like, the uh, pillows, flowers, and, like, candles and stuff like that, so when I first met her, when she walked into the room, she's like, saw all that stuff, and I wrote her a handmade letter about saying how much, you know, I appreciated her, it was really nice to meet her for the first time and stuff. Oh, so yeah. y'all married, right? No, nah, not at all. She's Wait. actually, she's actually engaged to another man. Oh. Which is crazy. So, you know, love love that. But nah, so like, <laughs> anyways, long story short to that, like, you know, we keep, we kept talking. I went to Chicago, whatever. Everything was cool, but then until it wasn't. So, like, we were dancing one night, um, and after we watched our favorite movie, and some some things just started to change. She's just like, I can't keep seeing you because I'm going to fall in love with you. And I'm just like, ain't that the point? <laughs> so, like, yeah. she dropped me off at the airport and said kind of the same thing. She kissed me. I never saw her again. I literally never saw that woman again. We talked on and off and stuff like that, but, like, she ended up moving to the East Coast, um, and then she just found somebody and got engaged. So, so it was kind of like that, or I'll meet them, and they're not, they really want, they want to be with me, then they're not ready, or it's just like they don't communicate, or they haven't communicated before. And yeah. it's just hard for them just to, like, be with somebody like me. So then, what was crazy is when 2021 happened and the obsess happened, like, I just got an influx of just, like, attention mm-hmm. that I was not used to. And you can, like, ask Daisha this, literally. I was not used to that. I was never used to, like, just all the attention from women that I was getting. Because in middle school, I was bullied before. So, like, I always thought I was, like, you know, not good enough and stuff like that. So, like, getting people just saying, like, you're talented, da-da-da, you're fine, you're sexy, all this stuff. Like, and it's, it's just been like that since then. Like, I, my mind was, like, what? what is happening so yeah. and i was in a relationship at the time and we were already rocky but like when that happened i just i couldn't handle it it was just like it just like made everything so much worse and i know artists don't like being that vulnerable but that's just kind of what it is um so for me it just kind of made it a contorted view because like after that um i wasn't really in therapy and i just started like you know i feel like most men artists get into that where they're like oh damn well let me just you know mess with the people that's kind of in this industry or this yeah, type yeah. of thing I started doing that and I'm like, damn, like I'm not really finding fulfillment in this. So then I had to literally go to therapy like three times to like to really go through that. So yeah, my exes, a lot of my exes are great people and they're very successful and I, you know, they're great and I love them and still got love for them. But at the time, like we were more mature to like really like have a, a healthy relationship. Um, and a relationship me, takes two people, so it's not just it one. It does. Person. It does. It makes me ask a lot of questions. I'm not Let's wondering. Let's ask a lot of questions. I'm, I'm wondering one: How do you deal with that as a, as an R and B artist? You know, you're always it's great content. Like no cap. Like it's yeah. great content for it. We'll continue. 
<laughs> like, it's great. But you're continuously on the forefront, and you're 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 always in front of the stage. How do you tell yourself that, you know, I am enough, uh, I am attractive, I, I I can do this, I can yeah. sing. What do you say to yourself to remind yourself of that? Also, well, I think my thing is it's like I don't even question my talent or my attractiveness or anything like that anymore. That's like I think because That's of therapy, good. and because it's like I mean when you get people saying it all the time, you're just like, okay, I'm like, everybody can't be lying for some reason. <laughs> but, no, for real. But what I have to, like, realize is, like, the good enough part because it's like when you came from a, I, I literally was born, I was born in Charlotte, but I lived in a city called Gastonia for most of my life. When you're coming from a town where nobody does anything, they don't, make it out i mean like we from the south we got you know you got the people that don't ever leave their hometown and stuff like that i told myself i was like i never want to be like that like yeah. so when i finally got motion with my career it just like gave me hope but it's like now i'm like okay i made it out this phase and now i'm in this upcoming phase with like meeting some of people that i've always looked up to and just stuff like that i'm like how do i not compare myself all the time so like i've just had to get to a point where i'm just like i'm doing this for myself obviously everybody says that answer but no I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my family and my fans. Like, people that actually get moved by what I do. I'm just like, the awards and stuff like that are, would be cool. They will be cool and they are cool. But it's like, me having music that actually helps people. Like, for example, you were saying, like, you were listening to Take It Personal earlier. I had legitimately hella people DM me talking about they were in their driveway and they just left their husband because they, they had a, their abusive husband because they listened to that song. Like, stuff like that yeah. is what makes it worth it and be like, okay, like, I am good enough because my music is helping people heal and go to, a, like, another phase in their life and close chapters. So I'm like, that to me is better than anything else. Like, literally, like, I want a Grammy. I'm going to get a Grammy. You I'm getting, are. Like, all I'm of speaking these into things. existence. Like, facts. Come on, yeah. That's going to happen, but I'm just like, these moments like this, and even, like, last night, I made, I played a really intimate show for literally only, only like, 40 people last night. But... And it was crazy because that venue I usually sell out or whatever, but like it was raining and all this other stuff was happening. But like, yeah, I really had to take a moment and just look at the people that just came. I'm just like, bro, it's like people are singing their hearts out of the stuff that I made yeah. and it's helping people. Yeah. That, that is just beautiful to me. So I'm just like, that's how like, I keep it cool because I'm like, bro, like this stuff is like really like just helping stuff, helping people from stuff that I just make in my room. Like, that's crazy. So. That's Your music is helpful. Your music is it's healing. It's honest. Um, <laughs> it's very loving. And I think I, as someone that had, um, I was listening to, don't, uh, take it personal, take it personal. I was listening to that. And then that drove me to a lot of other songs by way of Beautiful. Um, love that song. And then I heard, of course, uh, your song with uh, Keon Dixon. Timeless. Timeless. That uh, beautiful song. But then there's one that really stuck out to me, too. It was Crazy and Love Me Then. Crazy stuck out to me because I got a shout out to the person in the music video. Why the hell you throw her like that? Like, you Yo. threw that woman like, <laughs> bow. like <laughs> that, That's wild. So, like, no, nah, that, uh, I didn't even like that song when, I, when we wrote it. I hated uh -huh. it. I hated it. It's but, a great song. Yeah, it was just, like, more R&B pop leaning, and I was not trying yeah. to do that. But they were just, like experiment with it but people really like that song but i think what's crazy about crazy is it's just the fact it's just like it shows up it shows obsession like it shows that like and that's that's from my project uh a little crazy mm -hmm. but it shows a progression of like how love is because the thing is it's like a lot of times in love we say we wouldn't do something before we get into a relationship we say i'll never do this i'll never do that i'll never do this but let the right one get you. Oh, like, let Lord. the right one. You just flashback. I saw it. I did. Let the right one get you. You're going to be outside screaming at 3 in the morning. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that anyway. You know, the, that moment, that moment for me. I'm trying to tell y'all. Because I'm not going to lie. You're right. You're right. Like, I told myself, I'm never going to be that woman that's going to be like, hey, boo, how are you doing? Just checking on you. And now that I, I've realized, like, okay, no, for the right one, I will. That's what I'm saying. I still haven't found them yet. But that's what I'm saying. And it for could, the right one, I definitely would. And it could be in a good way or a bad way. Like, I've yeah. told myself I would never be in a relationship like when I'm raising my voice and my partner, I've been in relationships where it pushed me to the point where we were screaming at each other. I'm yeah. not a person that does that. Yeah. And I hate that. And I always tell myself, oh, I wouldn't, like, be, like, I, this was, like, when I was, like, immature and, like, younger. I was, like, oh, I would never be simp a simp for a woman. I literally made a whole trip for a woman that I never met, wrote mm -hmm. her a letter, all this other stuff, and just did all these things for her. So, like, you never know what you'll do for love until you are in love. It makes you crazy in a good way or a bad way, but it's just like depends on who 
you're with and how healthy that relationship is. So, shout out Crazy. That was just one of the uh, highlights of that uh, of that uh, the album. Well, let's go into Timeless. Timeless For was sure. it's a beautiful song. Tell me the like how that collaboration happened yeah. and the makeup of that song. So pretty much like. In 2022, I went on the uh, No Skips tour, um, Size Closer tour with Keon Dixon. Mm -hmm. um, I think we met at South by Southwest in 2021, the year before. And that's when I met Shawn Mendes. That was crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, I was at Soho performing and Shawn was just there. And he was like, I really like your music. I was like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I was like, why do I know you? You're so familiar. <laughs> I'm like, well, who are you? I was like, oh, snap. He's like, I'm Sean. I was like, oh, you're Shawn Mendes. <laughs> yeah, so it was cool. Enjoy your coffee. You know, <laughs> like literally. But, you know, uh, uh, Doc and Craig, Craig is uh, Kenyon's manager. They just had a really cool relationship, and they just like let me join them on the tour. And I'm gonna tell y'all, like, if y'all ever heard of Kenyon, Kenyon is probably one of the best performers mm -hmm. in our space. Like, Kenyon is just so good. Like, and I was so scared when I was going on that tour because I was just like, because it was him and Susan Carroll. So mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna act seeing these people. This is not happening. I'm just like, I just, I just know that, but it taught me to be comfortable with who I am. Because when you're on stages with those people, I'm just like, you got to, like, channel what makes you special. And what makes me special is my, one, my crowd control, my performance, but also, like, my honesty, my vulnerability in my songs and my catchiness to my songs. And I'm just like, let me just, like, I'm bringing something different to the show. That's why I'm on the show. Yeah. So that helped. And Keon just taught me a lot of vocal techniques that just changed how I do things forever. And, like, just hearing how his songs resonated with people is what made me, like, make all the songs that came out after that, which, like, Take It Personal and, like, mm -hmm. all that stuff and Timeless, like, it made me really want to make R&B music. So that was amazing. So yeah, so after that, um, I was super inspired and I made the album that's coming out mm -hmm. August 2nd. Ooh, um, okay. Um, that year. And I was like, I need to make some real R&B. Yeah. Keon, Keon challenges me to make real, real, real R&B. And also my other mentor, uh, Xavier Omar, he he makes. I love, love yeah. him that's, too. That's that's literally that's my brother. Like, yeah. He be if I ever call him a problem, he'd be telling me about myself. But <laughs> that's what you need though. But um, it just made me want to do that. So I made Timeless. By, I just wrote it I, before I even like thought about getting Keon on it. Yeah. And it was just I wrote it in my old apartment, and I was like, oh, this is like some, like I want to make some real like I'm talking about like some uncle be like you don't know nothing about this type of thing <laughs> so like i got i made it and then i was like i'm gonna just see if y'all want to get on it. it was a long shot i mean like we're cool so i just texted him i was like hey uh da -da -da. He didn't say nothing at first i was like okay <laughs> but then he was like i love this record i was like oh snap because if i got Keon telling me like he loves a record yeah i was like damn like this that's that's crazy for me and then he sent his verse back and i was like bro this this is going to change the trajectory of my career like it just is because it's like I don't, I'm not even the one to brag on stuff, but like, I know when I, I have a good year, I know when good music is made on, so it's like, this is a really good song, like, this is like one of them ones, for me, so, it was really cool, and then like, we did the video, and it was just beautiful, I was just like, I really think, no pun intended, I really think that's the time of song, like, literally, and I feel like when it actually catches on, for real, for real, mm -hmm. to like, mainstream appeal, I think people are gonna be like, this is like, really crazy, so, you know, shout out to Kenyon Dixon, um, yeah, that's how time is gonna be. And I love Timeless. I swear, <laughs> I, like, when I hear you speak and I hear you and I think back of these songs, it's like, I can't wait for that mass appeal to happen. I feel like it is happening, though. It's slowly. It's, it's, like, it's interesting. Like, it's like, the more, I don't know, it's like so weird because it's just like, in the last like two years, it's just like stuff has grown just like so much. And I'm just like, I can't even imagine what's about to happen. I already know what's about to happen next year. When I drop this, I, I'm not even just trying to say this because like, I'm really not. But it's because of the time that I took into this because it's like all of these stories on these songs are real things about my last relationship and it is just so relatable and so painfully vulnerable but like beautiful yeah and like I don't even like I'm a songwriter so I don't really co-write with people but I brought my friends in to co-write with me because they're they know me and they are great Daisha wrote a lot of it Daisha's on an album Daisha made Bride Nashville's own she's going crazy shout out to her yeah yeah um obviously Keon's on it um just a lot of other people and it's just so it is it's not even from my mouth it's from Daisha's mouth it's from the label's mouth this is like my best work like I've ever made and I know everybody feels like that when they drop a project but me, I'm very critical. I'd be like, okay, that was cool. Like, <laughs> like I told you, I don't like the song Crazy. Like, it's a great song. It's a great record. Yeah. I just don't. You know, it's cool. It's okay. It's okay. It's cool. But, song. like, this project is, like, going to change my life. And I know it's going to change. It's going to make an imprint on R&B. Like, it's literally going to make an imprint on R&B. So, I'm like, I'm so excited about it. So. 
I'm excited for you. Yeah, that's crazy. And we don't have a, a release date yet? Uh, apparently, my manager said it's going to come out August 2nd. So yeah. August 2nd. So that yeah. is true. That's the date. August yeah, 2nd. We gonna, we gonna, let's just say August 2nd. Well, it's going to it. make me want to turn it in faster. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fine. But as long as yeah. I get it to here, too, I want to hear sure. it. I, I mean, definitely want to hear some music. I, I can send you the link. It's done. Please do. Okay, don't I leak swear. it. <laughs> 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 they would they would literally be like uh uh-uh. No no you're good you're good but I'm super excited for um for the change or the the stamp you're going to actually make in R&B with yeah. your name it's going to be Timeless. Oh my God, that's perfect. Be that was a perfect segment segue. Wow. That wasn't it. It's like you do this or something. I'm mean, actually doing it for a little bit. <laughs> just for a little bit. Well, uh, can you tell me an, another collab that you want to do? Other collabs that you're looking forward to to doing, hopefully. In the future? Oh, man, there's so many, but uh, I don't know. I think I want to go. So I have like this list that I want to do. Sorry, Xavier was literally one of my bucket list ones. So yeah. that was crazy. That was one one of my first ones out the gate, which mm-hmm. was wild. Um, Kenyon was one. Um, and I want to collaborate with, well, there's some other up and coming artists. I don't know how deep you're into the up and coming. Oh, most definitely. Uh, do you know this artist named Dende at all? Yeah, 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 Dende. So me and him got one on my project. Um, that was one. Um, I'm really, I'm trying to get one with Eric Bellinger. So like, I'm trying. Oh, Eric Bellinger. I've interviewed him too. He's great. Yeah, I would love, I'm really hopefully one day to get that. I had one, but that one didn't like work out. So that, um, I just did some shows with Tone Stiff and Aaron Ray, so like I would mm-hmm. love to get Tone Stiff um, on something and just some people like that. So. Shout out to Tone, he came through the show too. So everybody has went here. That's so <laughs> crazy. I love Tone. He's so nice. Like, Tone is a sweetheart. He yeah. really is. Um, yeah. I, I think that because to me, I feel like I feel like people they they look only to mainstream sometimes yeah. and they lose the the beauty that's actually behind the artists that are still striving they're going to get to that mainstream yeah. side they're going to get there but learn the artists at the journey for now not till later that's been something i'm very passionate about because when i think about myself as a interviewer or as a personality with all my other titles that i freaking have um <laughs> <laughs> I, I love people that say oh my gosh i love you you're great i love what you do but then they's like did you do this before yeah yeah the, the previous stuff that didn't get seen to say, so yeah. you know what i'm saying like the look at this uh, look at the my stuff right now look at me for then now and get ready for what's coming out next because what club is coming out next again it's going to be worthwhile it's going to be great music it's going to be a beautiful beautiful artistry and it's yeah. going to be again noted to timeless it's crazy because it's like i think a lot of people don't understand they just see the result they don't see like the work that you do like literally like <laughs> Even with, like, this last show, I'm just like, people didn't see when I was, like, legitimately on the streets of Charlotte, like, every day passing out flyers. Mm. In my own city, passing out flyers. Like, just going to, like, open mics, going to, like, freaking clubs. Like, just going everywhere, just passing my stuff out. So, like, I just want to encourage anybody. It's just, like, don't stop. Like, I know everybody wants to focus on the end goal and the result because, you know, that's when you get the praise. But, like, you really start to fall in love with what you're doing through the journey, even if it's hard, even if it's, like, aggravating i'm like just enjoy the process because there's gonna be times where like you're already at the destination and you're gonna miss like having the genuineness of trying to like work to get a goal so yeah. just enjoy that and yeah keep going okay I, you know I- I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I have to cut the interview. Unfortunately, guys, don't forget, August 2nd, we're going to hold him to it. <laughs> New project coming out. And then, of course, you're going to hear all his songs. We already played uh, Take It Personal on oh, uh, on the airwaves. And I'm going to, of course, introduce more music of yours. That's tough. So y'all get ready for him. Um, and thank you again for stopping by R&B Vibes. No, thank thank you. you for having me. All right. That is it. Bye, y'all. Before we log off, I, I had to... To, you know, I get in my questions with these artists and I get obsessed with them, of course. Um, and uh, we was talking about off screen about this question, and I want you guys to hear this. What's the anxiety you feel as an artist, and what are some challenges experienced within the industry? I think it's, I think this is so crazy because I, I don't know if everybody's going to ever be vulnerable, but that's just my thing, I guess. Yeah. But um, I think being an artist is so filled with anxiety because it's like, one, you're sharing so much of you to the world in a song. And then people off rip in 30 seconds, they either gonna be like, this is trash. And people people can like have their opinions about art or whatever, but they're gonna be like, it's trash or it's not, or da da da. But I'm like, people don't understand, like, people are in their rooms, like, legitimately reliving their trauma, putting it in a song. If it's like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or whatever, they're reliving their experiences or something, and they're putting it in a record to share the world. So, one, that's already scary because some people don't even like sharing their self, period. So, that's a big one. And secondly, it's just like, you never know if people are going to show up for you. And that's when, 
what makes or breaks artists because you got to understand like nobody is going to or needs to want it more than you do like i could put out a song it's not you know my manager and my label might do stuff but i'm just like it has to be me that continues to push this stuff so i'm like if i don't believe in myself to a higher degree nobody else is going to believe in myself and that's like that's tough for people and thirdly it's just like everybody is scared that they're not gonna make it like even the people that we think are on them just like everything is not promised like you already see what's happening with the beef right now with like kendrick and drake oh, and all Lord. the other stuff yeah. i don't think anybody would have imagined with the things that are like being whatever about drake nobody thought that a few years ago and it's just like anything in this game can change at any moment and there's never any certainty and that's scary as hell for people especially for me because it's just like i love what i do and i know i'm gonna make it to the next level i'm like hell i'm in a freaking radio station because i made songs in my bedroom that's fucking crazy you can bleep that out so I, <laughs> literally it's crazy and I'm like, that's so wild. But like, we always have that anxiety. I'm like, this could be taken away at any time because it's like, music is a consistent, consistent rat race because yeah. it never stops. People's attention span are so short right now. Like, so we try to continually develop moments for people to connect with us, but there's always millions of other things going on. So when you get a fan base, you're like, oh, wow. Hopefully they like, they still like me. They still like me. They still like me. At least that's what I've struggled with. So I've just had to find peace. I'm just like, whatever I make, it just, it just needs to be genuine. And like, it connects with who it connects with. Yeah. People are going to like me if they like me. I can't control if people like me or not. So I'm just like, I had to relinquish that and just believe that in the journey. I'm just like, where I'm supposed to be is where I'll end up. So I think that's why a lot of anxiety comes with artists. And I'm just like, obviously money is like always fluctuating. Mm -hmm. I know they don't want to talk about that. I'm just like, mm -hmm. being an artist is hard. Like, literally, like you can come do a show and you only make three, $200. Maybe another night you'll do 4,000, but like you think you don't, but then you gotta have all the splits that you take from all your team and stuff like that. I'm just like, so it's hard. So music is possible. I know people that, all my friends actually do it for a living. We all do it for a living. It's, it's super like, we're blessed to do that. But you know, it comes with a lot. So I think it's, you know, whenever you see your favorite artist or listen to your favorite song, show them some love. Cause it was like, it's hard to do this. So I think that's what I meant by that. No, I love it. I think for me, I was able to relate to it on a on a different level, but same concept, because as someone that is an interviewer, a host, uh, like I said, all the other titles, uh, I try my best to just put out the content. And the content to me is not just about getting the viewership or hoping that that right person sees it. It's to make sure that the testimony of the artist is coming out. Yeah. And I think and I, that's why I feel like my questions are different, right? So then I put out the questions, I put out the interviews, and then I'm like, okay, God, I, I did what I'm supposed to do hopefully now and people are getting on to that artist and also it does help me out when somebody sees okay yeah this girl let's move her to this network and that's the fear that's the fear it's the anxiety of is this going to work or is it not going to work do people want to listen people want to hear people attention spans it's a lot of questions in it and then on top of that having this career it doesn't come out with a, a six-figure salary no you gotta still do other jobs you still gotta you know what you might be asking a question to an amazing artist in the next moment you're serving some tables yeah. because you have to continuously be on the grind yeah. however being on the grind and don't lose sight of what's in front of you. Don't right. lose sight. When you lose sight, when you lose that, you're like, you know, you're in a race and you're running, you're running, and you're looking at everything around you, you start to slow down because you get distracted. Don't get distracted, keep running. And never look at the different things that stumbles your, your walk, your run, whatever. Just keep going forward and have the faith to know that if you just keep trying and keep going, I promise you it's gonna be all right. And that's what I tell myself. That's a fact, because it's like, it's just really for me it's just like math i'm like if you continually pull up shots you're gonna make at least one you're gonna make at least one i'm like that's just that's just that's just real life fact but if you don't do anything you just give up you're not gonna get any results so i'm just like i'd rather keep shooting and just hope like and just see if one of them make it i just gotta put all of my shots up but if i'm not shooting like i'm, I'm not even gonna be in the game and i already mm. lost so like y'all just gotta keep going like literally i know that's cliche it's you know, it's just very cliche, but as I get older, I'm just learning the most cliche statements and the most simple facts are like, they're true. So. You never know what's gonna happen after you take that shot too. Like, Thanks. when I tell you that it's it'd be some random moments I'll have and I'll get a, a text message from someone that I look up to in the industry, someone that's like a mentor to me and they're like, I like, love the interview you did, you did a great job, da da da. I'm like, oh, I have a 
good. <laughs> I feel yeah. like I did my job. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know who's going to see what. So when you stop grinding, you're stopping the possibilities. Right. So just keep on going. And that's an advice to everybody. As you are in your field, regardless of what it is, you just got to keep going and never lose sight of that. So, that's a fact. Okay. I try to make sure. Do any other questions for this man? Probably I do. But, guys, I'm going to make sure that I bundle this all up in a beautiful package for you guys on YouTube. <laughs> and I thank you all for listening and talking to me. about. By the way, what social media? That's what I forgot to do. Social uh, media. Yeah, yeah all my uh, social media is at Byron Juwan, B-Y-R-O-N-J-U-A-N-E, um, everything. So follow me, tap in with me, and, you know, let's build. Me and Nashville's very own Desha McBride. I'm dropping our single, I Want You Now, May 31st, so make sure you tap in with us and stream it. By the way, that's my birthday. Oh, it's your birthday? Yeah, that's my birthday. Yo, that's so That's weird. crazy. <laughs> this interview is wild. <laughs> like every- Y'all got to tap in. Sorry. It just cracked me up. I'm like, May 31st. It's your birthday. birthday. I'm getting a song for my birthday. You get a whole song with Nashville's up and coming star, Deja McBride. I mean, that is my family. When I tell you, I tell Deja, I mean, a cousin, what's up? Where you at? That is, and she my play cousin, but I'm like, you my cousin, cousin. We we are like cool, cool. She probably probably not. I think she in Texas right now. Oh, Lord. She going to be able to answer today. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. She might, she might, she might not. Oh she my lord! Awesome. I need to have her back on the show. I interviewed her when I was doing the show with live performances downstairs, and then I moved up to up here. And did yeah, it yeah, nah. So no, my friend at the radio station. Oh damn! I think she was too. I think she was doing something. Anyways, <laughs> what was she doing? I don't know what she was doing. Either way, Nashville's very own Deja McBride is um, on my song, so y'all should check out. Okay. Oh lord. I got some got some text messages going oh, on. Jesus. Anyways. <laughs> check it out, Deja McBride. Of course, check her out. She's an amazing Nashville artist that we've had on um, a while ago. But to come back at some point. So, Deja McBride, Byron Geron, y'all going to come out with a song. May 31st, on my birthday. On your birthday. And then I'm going to get a text message or a song, a video, this is a video, like voice memo. I don't care. Of y'all singing happy birthday to me. We could try to figure it out. I don't want to try it. I want to do it. <laughs> no, for sure. We'll figure it out. Thank you again. Thank you.